All righty, welcome beautiful souls. This is our energy encouragement for the week of the 13th of March through the 19th of March. Again, I do put a timestamp on these only because we are following the moon phase for the week. So if you do tune into this video and listen at a later time, please do allow your intuition um, to tap into the messages and see what you can take from it. See what can make you go into your inner divine and reflect upon perhaps any of the messages that are brought forth in these. So I'm coming to you for the energy encouragement, March 13th through the 19th, 2022. Currently I'm recording this on Saturday and the moon is in its home sign of cancer. No coincidence when I looked, I was very emotional today, um, tapping into my inner divine. And obviously, if you have already been a listener on my channel, you know that I'm a bereaved mother. And so my emotions were really heightened today. So we will start out the week with the first pile. This will be for the beginning of the week. And on Sunday the 13th, the moon will move out of its home sign of Cancer into the fiery sign of Leo. So bring forth some joy in your life, bring some laughter through in your life, allow your spiritual strength to shine through, and we will get right into the messages for the beginning of the week. Seven of Swords, right off the get-go, we are pulling the energy of air. This card, the Seven of Swords, is about hidden information. This card can represent um, lies. This card can represent manipulation. So pay attention to this at the beginning of the week. It's asking us to um, have an awareness with deception um, through possibly communication or even our own intellect lying. You know, our egos do that to us sometimes. So I'm going to go further and pull more cards to see what else is brought up here. But for the collective, for the beginning of the week, around the 13th, 14th, when the moon is in Leo, we have the Seven of Swords. So let's see what else we have here before we go on into this reading. From the Chakra Oracle, we have... Okay, this is an impartiality. This is a spirit card because of the gray silver. This in my chakra oracle is about spirit. So impartiality. Perhaps wanting us to not take sides with information, to have an understanding or an understanding that we may be deceived by information, by communication, by anything that may be coming through, whether it be on mainstream, whether it be on social media whether it be just the collective narrative that's playing out there stay neutral stay impartial that's where you're going to find your harmony and your balance from the divine feminine oracle i brought this forth because we are moving into the full moon in virgo it's going to be just a little bit beyond that but we're going to be feeling this full moon culmination coming into fruition a couple of few days prior to the full moon on the 18th of march and also a couple days after. We're always feeling the ebbs and the flows. So we have the essence of all Buddhas. I have the power to make each moment sacred. Everything is material for my liberation. So what I'm feeling, you see this impartiality, and you kind of see how her arms are up as well. So stay really open to the flow. Stay impartial, not taking sides Taking sides right now is a bad idea because there's deception, there's hidden truth, there's denial of truth. This is an energy of sneakiness. So really staying open, staying impartial. With this being a spirit card, again, with the neutral color, pay attention to that because it's not wanting us to, you know, go too far off kilter, being emotionally in, involved in information that's being uh, coming into fruition because there's deception there. How you can be liberated is to know that you have your own inner authority within yourself. I love the reds in that as well, don't you? Um, I have the power to make each moment sacred. Everything is material for my liberation. So 
your own inner authority. Stay present in the moment because each moment is sacred. I know with the collective narrative that's going on that it's causing a lot of depression, anxiety within people. So how we can really tap into the inner divine within us is to trust our own, to not deceive ourselves, right? And to just really be present in each moment because it is sacred. Just a reminder to yourself that although life can be difficult, especially right now with this collective narrative, if we tap into each present, present moment and have this understanding that life is a gift and that our souls chose to be here at this time, that can really help liberate us with these energies. Lastly, for the beginning of the week, from my Gaia Oracle, the Ganesha. Clearing away obstacles, protection, guidance. Card 31 clearing away obstacles this could be with this air energy not allowing our minds to wander off into the duality you know stay in impartial to information um, clearing of your mind you know get in nature get tapped into your own inner divine within your sacred heart um, removing any blocks within you this protection, this protection for me is coming up with clearing your own energy, calling upon God, creator, source, your higher self to protect your thoughts, correcting your thoughts, and allowing that guidance from within you to really set you forth at the beginning of this week because of this deception card coming up first, right? The seven of swords, some sort of lies, some sort of manipulation, um, this could be even you denying your own truth. So make sure you're tapping into your inner divine, calling upon God, creator, source, universe, whatever you tap into um, for guidance and allowing that to keep you in this space of impartiality. And I really love it coming up with this feminine energy card. You know, I did choose that deck to do for this week because of us moving into that full moon and I did do a full moon video for the Vir Virgo full moon so if you haven't watched that please do go um, check it out as I learn and integrate astrology I love to share it so pay attention at the beginning of the week about deception and because I am doing these as a collective and they also may resonate with you in your own personal life you know pay attention to that with that swords and that deception energy coming up Stay impartial, stay neutral, stay balanced within yourself, correct your thoughts if you need to be, and um, allow that to liberate you. Beautiful. So for the, about the middle of the week, the moon will move out of Leo into the sign of um, Virgo. And so with that, we are coming into the full moon in Virgo where it's asking us to embody in a practical way of our everyday lives, our spiritual essence, what works for us, what doesn't work. So that could definitely be going, correlating with that Ganesha card of, you know, clearing obstacles before we come into this full moon energy. So what do we have first? The death card. So this is an ending. This is a maybe, uh, I love the purples in this card. Isn't this a beautiful death card? So as we all know, in order for new things to come into our world, we have to allow those things that no longer work, like the Ganesha card said, stated, allow those obstacles to be cleared. Let them die. And so let's just see what else comes up with this before I go any farther. I love the purples in that and the white rose creation another neutral spirit card Ooh, so allowing doing some clearing i'm feeling like smudging i'm feeling like clearing not only your sacred temple your body but also your home and tapping into creation look at this on the one side she's uh sorry i was holding it too high she has that you know uh skeletal but on the other side she has that white rose so as we allow things, old parts of ourselves, um, old narratives we may have been intellectually telling ourselves, 
as we allow those things to clear, to die, we allow a birth, a rebirth. And so and on that side, that's very representative of that white rose. Tapping into creation, clearing your energy. Again, another spirit card. So really, uh, so far with this reading, making your spiritual um, essence, your spiritual practices be at the forefront for the week of March 13th, approximately through the 19th. Love it. That's uh, the creation card too, you know, with endings, with the death, very Plutonian energy, becomes a new beginning, a new creation, a new way of perhaps doing things, seeing things. And that's really beautiful with that impartiality card coming up at the beginning of the week as well. So with the Divine Feminine, the patroness of impossible causes, I am miraculous. My prayers create powerful channels of possibilities. Really tap into spirit this week. I'm feeling that already with the first two parts of this reading. Um, our thoughts are powerful. Our thoughts are spells. Our thoughts are prayer. And so however it is that, again, like I shared before, that you tap into spirit, really filling yourself up with that impartiality card of not taking sides, go into your inner sacred heart, prayer work, protection around yourself, like the Ganesha card said, um, calling upon the Supreme Creator to fill up your heart with love and blasting that out to the whole planet, I believe is a collective message that is more important than ever. And just because we're seeing so many things die in the world that need to go, don't let it make you lose hope. Really tap into that sacredness. Your prayers matter. Your thoughts matter. Energy matters. Powerful. So the last card for the middle of the week, evolution, earth changes, climate changes, transformation. So I'm feeling like, wow, like, right? Such a powerful card to go along with this. Card 54, five plus four is a nine. Nine is a completion number, allowing that death of whatever's falling away right now allowing it to go because our prayers matter creation matters tap into it spiritual muscles and spiritual strength is more important than ever make sure you're doing things that bring you joy in your life every day um, these earth changes climate change and transformation not only goes along with this card right and we have Pluto still in Capricorn which is a death of the old structures, corporations, the top-down authority. This evolution that we are in as souls right now on the planet with Uranus and Taurus through 2026, we are continually going to see earth changes. We are continually, as the sun and the central sun send in their different um, frequencies and radiation of light, our bodies are changing, we're integrating. Um, the weather is changing. I know for me, I'm noticing a pattern about every two, three days that we're dropping or rising about 20 degrees. That is so much different than from when I was little, right? And so with Uranus and Taurus, that is earth changes. That's earthquakes. That's, um, I believe, changes in our magnetic poles, which is a fact. And that wobble is creating a lot of the weather changes that light coming in from the central sun and also the our sun is causing a transformation not only within our bodies but within the earth and so I'm feeling with this solar energy really getting tapped in to creator creation and really bringing an awareness forward within yourself that our thoughts our words our prayers matter it is not for it's not for uh it's all for not. It is definitely for purpose, and it does matter. So pay attention to that. Beautiful messages for the middle of the week, too. A lot of transformation here. We have it here with the death card and creation. <laughs> Don't lose hope. 
that your prayers are not being heard because your prayers and your thoughts are always heard by the supreme creator and that's how we do uh co-create so powerful message there towards the end of the week the same day as the full moon which is the 17th sorry i keep saying that it's the 18th in the united states 17th for other people so coming into the 18th on friday the full moon in Virgo culminates at 3.18 a.m. And then later that same morning at 7.26 a.m., the moon moves into the air sign of Libra where there's fairness, justice, balance, impartiality card came up. So what do we have towards the end of the week? <laughs> Another major arcana. So that's two for the week, guys. That's huge. That's about tapping into spiritual divine. That's about the creation card that was prior pulled prior this is about spirit your spiritual essence your inner call that this judgment call is telling us is about a call from within listening to that stillness that voice that gut intuition again i brought that up in the full moon in virgo listening to that inner divine this judgment card is about your inner calling from within your own inner divine letting you know your purpose you have a purpose this judgment card is about seeing things clearly right don't be impartial that's what spirits we have a lot of spirit message this week with the two major arcanas and then the two chakra cards that are spirit in my deck so this card right here is going to tell you that you have the opportunity to tap in within to your own inner divine that's speaking to you loud and clear and on what works for you and what does not work for you this is an awakening call that is right there within you tap into it grab yourself some your thoughts matter your prayers matter this is like my girlfriend soul whisperer always says this is your high holy help and we have two of those major arcanas this week the death card allow those things to fall away and again with this judgment card an inner calling within you that you know within you if you just listen to it what works for you and what no longer works for you beautiful Woo! powerful this week from the chakra quest blue chakra which would be our throat we have the quest so I feel like to me, this just tapping into that inner divine, listening to that judgment call that's calling from within you. I love this where the hands reach in town too. It always reminds me symbolically of spirits right there is all we have to do is reach out. All we have to do is um, pray in a way that we know we're powerful, that we're always heard. Go on that quest. You see this woman there again with that impartiality card, spirit opening those hands up wide, sometimes surrender. And I feel that too, again, with the water energy and the blue throat, the throat chakra, sometimes just surrendering and going on that inner quest within to make sure that we are hearing that judgment call from our inner divine. What else here? The goddess of devotion, I am love that doesn't leave. When I commit to love, my soul evolves. Powerful. Be devoted to yourself. Be devoted to your spiritual essence. Be devoted to listening to your judgment call within you from your own inner divine. Allow that quest to not only make you think clearly, but to speak clearly. I am love that doesn't leave. You are eternal. You are powerful. Your support is endless. Your inner divine creator of the universe right there always that agape love. When I commit to love, my soul evolves. Continue to blast out self-love to yourself and this entire planet. Don't be deceived like we had the seven of, seven of swords to where the agendas out there are trying to get you pulled off your center to be emotionally charged. Go into your own inner sanctuary. I call it your prayer closet, so to speak. Be devoted. Allow your sacred heart to guide you to be on that quest. 
we are now stepping into that powerful time when we are so very supported to do just that. Lastly, for this reading, purification, water element, emotional cleansing and rejuvenation. Cry if you need to cry. Go into your bathtub, take an Epsom salt bath. Allow, take a shower. Allow that shower to wash away any of the stresses, any of the burdens you may be feeling like you're carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders as an empath. I am, a, I practice that daily and I just surrender it to the divine. This is not my burden to carry the collective energy as much as I love humanity. If I get caught up in it emotionally, I feel that weight of the world on my shoulders, so to speak, purify cleanse get near water get in water drink a lot of water again like i said with the solar energy changing our bodies changing the earth hydrate purify do a sacred ceremony near the water if you're in a place where it's warm get sit by the water um, and allow your emotions to surface cry when you need to cry i always say tears to me are a gift from God it releases the pressure valve within us if we're very emotional beings like I am allow it to rejuvenate you cleanse you bring forth that beautiful vulnerability right we got the two blue which I did mention water with this one as well on the quest purifying water purifies water is emotional Water is intuitive. Trust your intuition to not be deceived by the seven of swords that came up for the beginning of the week. Don't deceive yourself and don't allow yourself to be deceived by the megalomaniacs that are fueling the agendas out there. They know they can emotionally charge us all up, especially being empaths, intuitives, right? Again, feminine energy with the water. Purify trust your intuition like i shared on the full moon in virgo video to trust your inner knowing your at your gut your intuition more than ever allow yourself to be illuminated with your own inner divine with the judgment the death card both being major arcanas to allow for the transformation i know that death of things i know that death of loved ones I know the death of things ending are painful. I think many of us are feeling that. So make sure you're doing you, tapping into that spiritual essence, crying when you need to, purifying your beautiful aura, your soul, and allowing that vulnerability to be your fucking superpower. Beautiful messages for this week. Anything else I'd like to share before I wrap this up? I hope you enjoy. Give it a like, comment, share, share, share. Tune back in possibly to see how this is coming up for you for the week of the 13th through the 19th. Powerful times. Just as we come into this full moon in Virgo on the 18th, in which I'll do this for the next week's energy encouragement, we also do have the sun moving out of the water sign of Pisces into the fiery sign of Aries on the 20th, which I'll do that for next week. Um, embody your spiritual essence. Pay attention to your health. Be your emotions, your mind, your thinking, your body. And then when we go into that equinox energy on the 20th, allowing for a cleansing and a balance of the dark and the light. I send this to you guys with so much love. Thank you so much for being here. Lady Vertigo is out. Shalom, shalom.